most uh, uh, we can celebrate, hallelujah, that uh, Reinhard Bunke, I don't know if you all know him or know about him, 79 years old, probably somewhere between 70 to 79 million people have been won into the kingdom of God through his ministry. Wow. And he went home to be with the Lord the other day. And uh, <clears throat> that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's magnificent. Uh, if you ever think that uh, your one life is not worth much, ah, hallelujah. So we celebrate. My wife and I had an opportunity to meet him when we were in London there. And technically, we push this issue. This is not a time to be sad. Mm -hmm. uh, he's moving from labor to reward, and uh, we can rejoice at the magnificent work that was manifested in his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was trying to get ready for how we should proceed and listen to the Holy Spirit as to how we should carry on this morning. And then <clears throat> Brother LeBaron Collins leaned over and said to me, I got a testimony. Shock you, uh, <laughs> 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 
He should be glad he's going to do that. And I'm going to take you off all this eloquence and all this other stuff and all this other thing. And I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, I just wanted to share that because, you know, God is faithful. And he's, he's a healer. He is a healer. We have a, a, a brother that comes to our men's fellowship on Saturday. And I, he's worked with me for a long time. We've been 20 years in the Oregon. But, you know, Oregon knew about the situation. Uh, when I told him about this report, he said, man, you got something come up against your body. You can heal real quick. I said, glory to God. But you know what? His healing power is available for us all. And we just have to tap into that and just receive God's healing, his awesomeness, and his power that he, he's given us as believers. This season of giving, he's able to give exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask. Y'all believe that? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you, Pastor, for letting me share that. But God is faithful, guys. Yeah. He's faithful. Okay, so now, 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 now. Uh, we're going to, you step down right there. And let us come up here. Uh, I know we Facebook, how y'all Facebook, and uh, we appreciate you all. I want you to share our video on your page and share it throughout the week. And thank God for you in Jesus' name. Uh, but just allow us this minute here. Um, this is a healing moment. I need you to stand up out there. And uh, Reverend Collins and Linda Collins are going to lay hands on. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 This is a healing moment. Glory to God. And here's how we're going to do this. It won't take long. It won't take long. Don't come if you don't believe. Amen. You know, because he said, Do you believe that? Yes. And that's the key to all of the wonderful promises of God yes. and the manifestation of his power is connected with. We believing that his word is true. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So those of you from this side over here, this way, this side, if you want to, you're coming for them to lay hands on you, can you get in that line right there? And then uh, those of you coming from this side, you line yourself in this aisle right over here. In the name of Jesus, come on, play something strong. Play something strong. Play something strong. We can do that. Uh, uh, the, the, the one we just did, he's a healer, and this, our God, our God, our God, our God, and you all enjoy this, and, and be blessed in this time. This is a healing moment. Hallelujah. Awesome God, we serve. Mighty God. Mighty God. Just one side of the time. Hold it. One side of the time. That's right, God. Oh, just wait back there. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God. Our God. Okay, we can do it that way. Yes, yeah, come on. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to focus in on God's healing power. Focus in on His love. Focus in on the manifestation of His word. Hallelujah. He confirms His word with signs. He's a healing God. He's a great thing. He's a God that above all gods. He's an Elohim. He's an Elohim. He's the Lord God Almighty. He's God Almighty Himself. There's none like that. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We believe 2,000 years ago. That Jesus took care of on the cross is alive now. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Holy be the name of the Lord. Righteous is the name of the Lord. Healer is the name of the Lord. He's our 
but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, not with eye service as man pleases, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall be received, no, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And then verse 9, and ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. Hallelujah. Now, whew, if we could just take a snapshot and make a decision that, whew, this is the way God wants for life to be. Our minds will be saying, oh yeah, we see God never visited Mac and Peter. <laughs> he, he, don't, he don't know. He don't know what them kids be doing or where well, they don't have folks anymore. But uh, he don't know what them kids be doing up and down the street and in my neighborhood. So I don't know where he got this idea from that he wants us to be like this. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. We need to flip this whole situation. Hmm? Number one, what's going on around us is not the way that it is supposed to be. Hmm? The way it's supposed to be is what God has said in his word and he had prepared this, as I said a little while ago, before the foundation of the world. So consequently, there needs to be a flip that happens in our, at least in our thinking process. There needs to be a turn in our spiritual attitude. And there needs to be a decision for us to make that this is the way God wants for things to be. Amen. So then, let's go back in here and look. And I want you to be approaching this from the standpoint of who God is. God is God all by himself. He is God who knows everything. He is everywhere present. And he has all power. Consequently, since he has all power, then it shouldn't be a big deal that things should be the way he wants them to be. Hallelujah. So then now, we're going to read back down through these verses and point out a couple areas that I want us to focus in on and make a decision that this is the way we choose to live our lives. All right? So here we go. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Now here's the phrase. For this is right. Ta-da! <laughs> if we start there, if we decide, oh, this is right. Not what we saw on Sesame Street. Hmm? Not what we got from Dr. Seuss. Uh, and not from all of this other stuff that we floating around in the social atmosphere around us. This is right. Can somebody say, hmm, this is right. Now, let that this is right take hold 
on the inside of yourself and establish this is right. This is the comparison. This is the place. This is what God wants. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read it one more time. Ephesians chapter 6. This is what God wants. And in our, in, our, in our Sunday work study, in our Wednesday work study, we're using this book by Bob Yangin called Ephesians. And the, the title of this chapter that begins with uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, the title of that chapter is Please the Lord. This is what pleases the Lord. This is what God likes. This is what God wants. This becomes the choice that he gives us to make. We can either choose what it said in verse 1 as being what is right, or we can choose the opposite of right. What's that? Wrong. Wrong. Two choices. It's not all that complicated. You know, they say on Facebook and all of the, this, our relationship, it's complicated. No. It's either right or wrong. God tells us this is right. Anything else is I didn't get enough of that. <laughs> good, good there for a minute. But everybody kind of clammed up there for a second. This is right compared to wrong. So if you're not doing what is right, it must be wrong. wrong. How complicated can that be? And as I said in the class this morning, how did things get to be so complicated? When you've got just two choices. You either do what is one more time. Right. Or you do what is wrong. And if you're not doing what is right. Then obviously you're doing wrong. And you got a choice to make. Stop doing wrong. And do right. Did you do right? Did So then, let's situate ourselves to decide, let's build our lives, or let's connect with what it is that pleases the Lord. And when you please the Lord, all of the wonderful things that he has in store for you comes to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, so, I'm going to ask this question. The answer seems simple, but think about it when you do it. Uh, do you want to, and I'm saying this slow, do you want to please the Lord? Yes. 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 Uh, in order to please the Lord, according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1, what do we need to do? Do what is right and not what is wrong. In order to please the Lord, he says, this is what's right. Anything other than this is wrong. Therefore, the power of choice that he has given us should anchor into doing what is right. <laughs> Driving in today, I kept working on ah, is, there, is, there, is there just such a way that I can say what needs to be said in order to help us finally make the decision that we're going to do what it is that God tells us to do and expect for him to do what he said that he will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there's a lot of uh, uh, 
of uh, detail. There's a lot of uh, experience. There's a lot of situations, almost to the point of being overwhelming. There's overwhelming situations. There's there's issues that seem to boggle our imagination. There's stuff going on that makes us want to scratch our heads and say, how could this happen? And the bottom line always comes back to choosing. Is this right? Or was this wrong? And when we, flip, and when we find ourselves halting back and forth, trying to get a hold of what's going on, we should always boil it down to, is this right? Is it right for me to think like this? Is it right for me to go there? Is it right for me to put this in my body? Or is it wrong? God lives with us each and every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There is no nanosec or nano, 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 nano or whatever kind of, of measurement. There's no, not even the smallest essence of time. That God is not with us. Hmm? Because the moment, the instant, the flesh that God leaves us, we're done. Hmm? Let me have you participate in an example here. Take a deep breath if you're able, but take a deep breath and breathe in. And then breathe out. Yeah. That breath right there mm -hmm. was a blessing from God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That breath right there proves that He is with us. And it is His desire for us to live. Amen. Because the first time you go to take a breath, and there's not one there. <laughs> You're done for. <laughs> the Baron said, Clear! Yes. <laughs> they just get ready to do you. Uh, and they, they had me wear this, this portable defibrillator, you know, so if, if my heart stopped, boom, that defibrillator would, would kick, kick in. And, and then I had to tell my wife, if I pass out, don't touch me. Because oh, when that thing kicks off, it'll get you too. <laughs> so she said, like, okay, then go ahead and die. <laughs> and I was reading this. I don't know who it is. I don't know what this is. I was reading this where this person posted up. They said, uh, when I die, I don't need my husband walking around my casket saying oh she would want me to live and find somebody else she's like no get in this casket <laughs> 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 but I'm gone you go too <laughs> but listen life is precious y'all and it's precious because God gives us yeah. life. Yeah. And the best thing he wants us to do is live life the way he has determined for us to live it before the foundation of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we look in here, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, children, Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Now I don't care what your kids are doing. I don't care what I don't care what they're going through. I don't care what you went through as a child. This is right. And when children will obey their parents in the Lord, it comes along in verse number three. 
verse number, I'm skipping two, we'll just go to three. It comes along to say that when children obey their parents in the Lord, what happens according to verse three? That it may be well with thee. Hmm? And thou mayest do what? Live long. Live long on the earth. Listen, listen to this. In spite of this, uh, these people got these attitudes about climate change and this and that. Listen, listen the, this earth is magnificent. This earth is wonderful. Have you traveled around? Have you, have you flown in the plane and looked at the sea? Ooh, how awesome this earth is. And God wants us to live long for things to be well while we're here on the earth and for us to live long. So listen to me. And I don't want to be, I, I, I don't want to be waxing political or anything like that. But these people talking about, well, you know, according to climate change, things are going to be over in a minute. That ain't what God said. I said that's not what God said. Amen. If he tells us he wants us to live long on the earth and not just barely get by on the earth, then therefore there's something he wants us to do. Which is to do what? No, no, no. God wants us to do right instead of wrong. I need everybody to say it together. God wants us to do right and not do wrong. When we do what is right and don't do wrong, then we will do well and we will live long on the earth. Amen. Hmm? Yes, but you know, a young person died the other day. Young person had a heart attack. This child was aborted. This thing happened to that. This person went into school and shot the kid. Lada, they have a life before them. Hey, what does God want? He wants us to be well and do what? Live long. Now, then we come up to this situation here. Why is it that people die before their time? Why is it that these, these disasters happen? These catastrophes happen? Why is it that people die before their time? Because of, what's that three-letter word that begins with an S? Sin. 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 Because of sin, the wages of sin is what? Yeah. The gift of God is what? Life. One more time, the wages of sin is what? Yeah. And the gift of God is what? Life. And listen, look how smart God is. He made a plan that he wants us to live long on the earth and for it to be well with us. So early on in his, in, in his dealing with humanity, early on, he fixed the situation that deals with sin. Hmm? The, only, the only thing that disrupts the plan of God is sin. But guess what? Super smart God handled that sin issue. Uh, how many smart people in here can tell me how long ago did he handle that sin issue? Over two thousand years ago, God dealt with the sin issue took care of it, moved it out of the way, eliminated the opportunity for it to have impact in your life and my life. Mm -hmm. So then, he took care of it. <clears throat> he paid the price through his son Jesus. Well, let me, let me back up. He required a price to be paid and then he paid the price that he required to be paid. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. You can't get that kind of deal anywhere. <laughs> Macy's, TJ, come on. Car <laughs> J, oh, come on. 
Okay, yeah. see, not the all right. He required a price and then paid it. So technically, <laughs> what that means is, in essence, you can go into the store and just walk out with whatever you need. You don't have to pass the cash register. You don't have to keep your coupons. <laughs> coupons. <laughs> if we don't have a coupon, we ain't getting it this week. <laughs> uh, come on now. So then, God required a price to be paid for our peace. He required a price to be paid for our joy. And then he stepped in and paid it. Mm -hmm. So, so what is then therefore left for us to do? Nothing. Just what are you doing to give? Just receive. Then how does God want us? How does God want us to receive? Listen closely. Be sharp here. How does God want us to receive the life that he wants for us? How does God want us to receive the healing? How does God want us to receive the joy? How does God want us to receive the peace? Now, don't answer real fast. Hold steady and hone in to recognize how is it that we receive the life that God wants us to live? How? By who? Who said it? Believe by believing. Believing. What does God, and then don't give me these little cutesy little fancy answers. What does God want you to believe about your peace? What do you believe that God wants you to believe about your life? What? What? What does he want you to believe? His word. What does, you, what does he want you to believe about joy? What do you think he wants you to believe about peace? Uh, Bill, Pastor Bill Lane, uh, there's a song from the old church and the church. Jesus paid it what? All. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. But what did he do? Washed it. And washed it. Washed me. And made me what? White. Okay, I'm asking again. So then, therefore, what does God want you to believe about your peace? What does he want you to believe about your healing? What does God want you to believe about your joy? That Jesus paid it all. How much? Say all. All. How much did Jesus pay? All. Jesus Pay it all, which then results in this position. Jesus plus what? Jesus plus what Jesus paid plus what? Nothing. Nothing. If Jesus paid it all, then there's no more to pay. Hmm? Now listen, this gets a little shaky right up in here. When we are trying to read scripture enough so that we can be accepted by God and that we can earn his peace, what are we doing? We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're denying, we're doing Jesus plus something. Plus my reading. Plus my paying money. Plus my eating or not eating. Huh? Oh, come on now, come on now, come on now. Jesus paid it all. 
There was nothing left when he finished doing what he what he said. It's finished. It is finished. That's what he said on the call. When it's finished, that means there's nothing more. Nothing else. Nothing left. No slip hanging out. Hmm. Hmm. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. But, but, he washed it. And when he washed the stain out, when you look for it, you're not going to find it. And if it's all gone, any effort that you make to try to deal with it, and it's all gone, is foolishness. It's wasted. I want to say it like this. It's wasted hunger if you're fasting to get better. It's wasted uh, uh, energy if you're running around trying to make yourself strong. It's wasted if you pop a pill. Hmm? If you're taking pills to make yourself better, then you're saying what Jesus did wasn't enough. Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 1 the last phrase of that verse says what? This is right. Listen to me. Is it right to believe that Jesus paid it all? If we believe that Jesus paid it all, what is left for us to pay? Say nothing. So check yourself. Are you trying to do more than what Jesus did? Are you trying to get it done another way. Do you think that you in your power is able to do more than what Jesus did? What did Jesus do? Well, he, he endured stripes. Son. He endured thorns crushed on his head. He endured being hung on the cross. He endured being pierced in the side. He endured being laid in a grave. Mm -hmm. And early <laughs> Sunday morning, he got up. Pastor yeah. Bill Lane, what did he get up with? All power. All. Does that mean there was any left over? He got up with all power. I don't know. I guess it's awesome Jesus, huh? Kind of like, mm, mm, mm. He got her done. <laughs> Come on now. And so I'm asking you today to genuinely consider and earnestly face the fact that he paid it all. There's nothing left for you to pay. And he wants us to believe that what he did was enough. So now I'm going to read through. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 through verse 9. And then I'm done. I'll give a little comment on verse number 8. But when I get through verse 9, I'm done. Hmm? And the decision becomes up to you. Yeah. Yeah. 
and being that in every aspect of our daily life and existence, we have to take into consideration, do I really do this? That what Jesus did was enough. And if it was enough, and there's nothing else for me to do, then I trust him. Mm -hmm. Here's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, King James. Oh, glory. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. So this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And you know what? You can honor your father and your mother almost like if you don't know who you were, you know, you know who your daddy was, you can still honor them. Uh, super sad if you don't know who your mother is, but you can still honor her. Hmm? Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment. And what's those two words? With promise. With promise. With promise. It's a promise. That when you honor you, yeah, but you don't know, he's a dirty dog. He left us and with, with bills and, you know, and this, he was a rolling stone. <laughs> Wherever he laid his hat was at home. <laughs> when he died, <laughs> all he left us was alone. still honor him because there's a promise to that honor. The honor of your father. The honor of your mother. There's a promise connected. A promise from God himself made to you personally. What is the promise? Verse 3. That it may be well with you. And thou mayest live long on the earth. Um, this is, you know, some people are feeling like, you know, hey, let's hurry and just get on out of here because stuff's so crazy. <laughs> you know, living long, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to go to the nursing home. You don't want to be on the breathing stuff and all that kind of. But God said, this is the way he wants it to be. He wants it for it to be, he wants for it to be well with us as we're living long on the earth. Okay. Now, um, my last little, my last little snap to have you pay attention to in connection with him wanting us to live well on the earth is this. Is it well with me? Don't answer. You know that Old Testament story that the, the prophet and the, the woman that she gave the son, he died and she jumped on the, the mule and went to go to the prophet and the prophet said to the servant, said, go ask her, what's, what's going on? Go, go ask her. Is it well with you? Is it well with the son? Ask her that. And I'm asking you today. The promise God made to you is for it to be well with you and that you should live long on the earth. So when the question is asked of you, is it well? And you go through these mental gyrations and, and, and you, you, you take this survey and you look around and then you start feeling to see if things are well. But it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what you see. 
being well with you to live long on the earth is centered in God. Because he's the one that said, when you honor your father, honor your mother, it will be well with you. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. And you fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Even if you weren't brought up you still have time to understand the fear and admonition of the Lord. Doesn't matter where you start, the issue is start. Verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. With fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart. There it is. Singleness of heart. I wish there was a way that there was somehow we could just stamp a picture on your heart and have it be the word believe. Mm -hmm. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And so, our effort is to keep our hearts filled with believing. Hmm? Sometimes we have to talk to ourselves yeah. to believe. Sometimes we have to we have to look at ourselves and say, hey, 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 you're a child of God. You're God's special yes. child. Yes. And he loves you. Yes. He really does. He doesn't want you just barely making it. He doesn't want you scraping and scuffing together with pennies and this and that. He wants it to be well with you. And being well with you is connected to believing that what Jesus did paid it all. Verse 5, so many give me to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and see the of your heart as unto Christ. Verse 6, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the believing heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Here's verse number 8, and I just want to just uh, throw this in its own personal thing. I was riding on the DOT bus back in the day, and I heard the Spirit of God speak this particular scripture to me. He said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 8, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. I heard the Spirit of God speak this scripture to me when I was giving consideration of our little congregation then, building a church building for a congregation in India. And he said to me, you Build that for them, and whatever you do for them, I will do for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's why this building we're sitting in now, because we built that building for that congregation in India way back those years ago, in the, in the 80s or something like that. We built that, built, built that building for that congregation in India. And because we built that building for that congregation in India, God saw to it that we received 1900 East Grand Boulevard as a building for Salvation Temple Church. And because we received 1900 East Grand Boulevard as a building for Salvation Temple Church, we were able to sow that building 
into another congregation when God called us to do something else. And when we sowed that building into that congregation, God saw to it that we're sitting here now. Amen. Amen. Whatever you do for somebody else, God will see to it that the same thing you do for somebody else, he will do for you. Whether you be bond or free, whatever you do for somebody else, he will do it for you because he is no respecter of person. He doesn't care what side of town you live on. He doesn't care about your family background. He doesn't care about the current prevailing situation economically or socially or relationship. No matter what it is, God desires that it be well with you and that you live long on the earth. So make up your mind. One, I choose to live well like God wants me to live. Amen. Then number two, make up your mind to live long as God wants you to live on this earth. And when God determines for you to live, I don't care if they unplug the machine. That heart will keep on beating. Yes. That life will keep on living. Yes. Yes. Because our lives are in God's hands. Hallelujah. Let me just stand up on your feet if you will. <clears throat> I'm grateful that you came today. I'm grateful that you tuned us in today. And I pray that you'll take and allow the insight from Holy Spirit to connect with your spirit, your life, your emotions, your everything. And have you earnestly challenge even yourself that in everything that you're getting ready to do, that you be sure you, that you will be doing what you understand according to the word of God to be right in the sight of God. And as you do that, he will always see to it that you do well in Jesus' name. He's going to turn the situation around. He's going to open some doors for you that you thought there was no way. And then he's going to shut some doors. Yeah. He's going to make some people go away yeah. and stop plaguing you. Yeah. He's going to make people start doing good things for you. Yeah. Even people that don't know you. Yeah. He's going to use them to bless your life. And then he's turning up the power on the inside of you yeah. that you recognize that when you give joy to others, joy will be coming back to you. Amen. When you make peace Amen. in the lives of others, Amen. peace will overflow your life. Amen. When you share love in every area of your life, love will saturate your life. Amen. And it will be well with you. And you live long. this prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray to you in Jesus' name that you take these words, that you by Holy Spirit see to it that every person receives and understands those things that you desire for them to know in order that their lives will be well and they'll be able to live long. Thank you for helping us not be satisfied with 
just get by, but that we will choose to do what is right in your sight and turn from anything that's wrong in your sight. And we will receive and believe that the work that was done for us by your great love in your son Jesus applies to us today now. And as we go forward, we do so in the name of Jesus, believing and trusting in the power of your word and that you are God, our Heavenly Father. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so I'm going to share with you now the gospel. The gospel is found in the gospel according to John chapter 3, verse number 16. We're going to put those words up on the screen. I'd like to take a moment to just read it together with us out loud. But we need to turn your heart and receive its mighty power. Those words, you ready to read? For God so loved the world. Yes, he did. That he gave his only God. He sure did. That was what I believe. This gospel here points us to salvation. It points us to the opportunity that God receives us into his family. And he calls us his children. He gives us his name. And everything that he is is in his name. And his name in us connects us with his magnificent power. So let's read this salvation scripture from Romans chapter 10, verse number now, verse number nine. Read it strong out loud. Ready? Read that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the saved from the gutter. Saved to the uttermost. Being the head and not the tail. Being above and not beneath. Being guaranteed and sealed by the blessed grace and mercy of God himself. Not that we just live a good life in eternity. But as we connect with him right now, good luck starts now in Jesus' name. Pray this prayer out loud. Say, God in heaven, thank you for today. I believe that your word is true. I've seen, heard, read, and said the gospel. I have seen, heard, read salvation. Thank you for your great love for me. Thank you that you washed my sins by the blood of Jesus. I declare, I receive that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, sir. I will walk righteous, think righteous, talk righteous, be blessed with righteousness in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm your child. You're my father. It is well with me. I will live long on the earth to praise your name and declare your glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Pray that prayer and receive that insight. And you're not connected to a good Bible believing, Bible teaching local church. Find one. Get in there. Learn and grow. And if there's not one around you, do whatever it takes to get here. 25,000 North Christ the Drive in the city of Hazel Park. And we will teach you. We will bless you. We'll love you. And you'll experience the manifestation of the goodness of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Check out our website, stc.church. 
more information about Salvation is there, and you'll be connected to us. You'll be able to get connected to other social media sites in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye! <laughs> Let me got you here. Go ahead and receive it in Jesus' name. Um,